Very good evening to all of you. Let me take this opportunity to welcome our Honorable Minister of Communications and IT, Sri Ravi Shankar Prasad ji. Thank you very much, sir, for taking your time. I'm aware that you were in Parliament uh, and you finished with the Parliament session and came straight here, so grateful to you. I'm also grateful to uh, Chairman TRAI, Mr. Sarma, who just left before the Minister, for his very collaborative message to the industry that together we will build the dream of a digital India and importantly broadband for all. Uh, my industry friends he here who are assembled today, uh, my friends from Ericsson, uh, a company which I have known from the first day when I entered this business, and His Excellency, the Ambassador of Sweden to India, uh, we are very greatly warmed by and touched by your words this evening of again showing the collaboration that India and Sweden can do in this particular, particular area. And finally, friends from media. And let me start by saying that as I was walking up the stairs, uh, two or three of my old uh, media friends said, where are you going to get your 60,000 crores from? Uh, this is the announcement, uh, uh, sir, that we made yesterday in terms of investments. And I was taken uh, back many, many years uh, ago, in 1993 it was, when I was in the Sweden's Ericsson's headquarters in Chista. And I was having a luncheon meeting with Kurt Hellstrom, the then president of Ericsson. And the order that I was placing with Ericsson at that time for the Delhi network, sir, was $27 million, and not the $9 billion which is still being questioned today. And he asked me, uh, how are you going to pay? I said, Kurt, look, I can put up only 15% of the deposit, which is $4 million. I don't have any more money. And the money will be paid to you on happiness. <laughs> and he said, describe happiness. This was over lunch. I said, happiness is when my customers are making calls on the road, inside the rooms, and are happily uh, making their conversations. That will be the day of happiness. And I promise you, you will be paid. And I must say, Kurt Hellstrom took that uh, challenge and uh, decided to ship the equipment of $27 million to a fledgling startup operator called Airtel at that time in Delhi. And they say, rest is history. But today, to my friends in Ericsson, I have to say the 60,000 crores will be paid on happiness <laughs> when my minister is happy. <laughs> when my regulator is happy. I cannot tell you, my friends at Ericsson and Delhi Network is an Ericsson network, so I can tell you. And Paolo, you know that we have been making, having these conversations, and you are working very hard, I know. But I was with the minister even last night. He remains unhappy. I think we together need to commit uh, to all the users of our network, the government, the regulators, and all of us who are assembled here today, a commitment that we will make these networks work, despite some difficulties that we face. I think it's our job to overcome those difficulties. And Minister Sir, right in the uh, beginning of uh, my uh, short speech, may I give you the confidence and commitment on behalf of the entire industry that we are on a daily basis, weekly basis, getting better. And I was very encouraged with your words a few days back that you're finding some improvements, but more needs to be done. And we will do so. On a serious note, I think we are here today for broadband for all. Uh, this is a call also that uh, I made uh, in Antalya just uh, late last month to the G20 leaders, where internet for all, connectivity for all, was one of the key pillars that was given to the G20 leaders, and there was a great deal of resonance uh, around this particular theme. Our Prime Minister's vision of digital India, using digital medium as a way of achieving many of his pillars, is in the center stage of all that he plans to do for our country. To my mind, he accords the highest priority amongst his pillars to digital India because he recognizes that building hard infrastructure, building health programs, building education for all, are all going to take time. And something that can uh, crash that time is a digital medium by way of which public services, government services, M health, M education, M commerce, and all of the variety of things that the society needs can be efficiently and effectively delivered through digital medium. That's why you see the big programs that the 
regulator just spoke about the Bharat net, very large amounts of money are being spent on building fiber to the panchayat. On top of that, we will be putting our layers of wireless communications, and we are therefore one of the important parts of his uh, 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 vision to provide all that is required in the country through the digital medium. I personally feel there are some fundamental requirements to achieve this, and I will touch upon that in a moment. But what is the outcome that we seek from a digital India? Financial inclusion, I think the regulator also spoke about it through the payment banks that have been given to mobile companies. We should now provide frugal banking in this country. Into the deep rural area, we should be able to do what we have been able to do with our mobile services. Providing that 10 rupees top of voucher at fraction of the cost, providing uh, payment services, uh, transfer of money, uh, ensuring that they can pick up banking products from our payment banks at a fraction of a cost that the banks are delivering to them today. I think that will be a challenge that we must uh, take upon ourselves. And I have no doubt that this industry is going to surprise everyone on the positive side. Make in India is another important part of the Prime Minister's strategy. And I think if we have to bring in affordable devices, which is again a very, very important part of the digital program, we need to manufacture some of these devices here. Smartphones are rising in uh, their supplies from outside. The load on in India to import these devices is going to increase. 25 million a quarter, as we heard. This will probably end up going to 100 million a quarter. I think time has come to seek the manufacturing community, the vendor community, to come and manufacture more and more here. I think that will be an important uh, part of the uh, entire program. Something that is incumbent upon us is very large-scale investments into the networks. And I'm happy that we announced a major program of 60,000 crores of investment yesterday. And that was in hardcore capital infrastructure, radio base stations, switches, submarine cables, fiber optic cables, and also uh, changing some of the older networks. I'm sure the rest of the industry will be also putting their own investments, taking the investment levels that this country has not seen for a long period of time. Minister, sir, you'll be pleased to note that this year is the largest capex year for Airtel where we will be spending about 16,000 crores on just capital expenditure on networks, excluding the spectrum. We will need your support. Uh, this particular vision cannot be achieved even by an efficient private sector. While we have been able to take phones to rural hinterland, into forests, into, uh, deep into Himalayas, but I think the next journey, which is the broadband for all, will require more enhanced uh, cooperation from the government. You must be commended, and I can tell you I've been a long traveler on this road for over 23, 24 years now. In fact, my first step into telecommunication was in 1983, so that in some sense makes me one of the first private sector citizens in the country to be associated with telecom. I can tell you, sir, I have tried hard but not succeeded for all these years on some of the important issues facing this industry, and you have in a short period of time taken care of some of these vital issues that were facing the industry. <laughs> Spectrum trading is not new to us. This has been talked for the last 10 years. In the last five years, it's been a policy in the making. Within few months of your promised commitment, we have spectrum trading, we have spectrum sharing. When this industry came under tremendous flack on call drops, you came forward and made a very important statement. You cannot have no towers and good mobile services. You debunked the uh, uh, issue around radiation hazard by saying there is no issue on radiation. And I think those messages coming from an authoritative voice like yours help our cause uh, with the resident welfare associations and general society at large. You wrote letters to the government and state governments to ensure that we have right of way availability, government buildings are made available for putting up towers, and I think these are important uh, ingredients uh, of a collaboration that we seek from your side, sir. So once again, let me say I deeply compliment you and your boldness in supporting the industry issues. Few things will require your attention, sir, perhaps urgent attention. Uh, the regulator, uh, Mr. Sharma, spoke about the issue of spectrum. I think uh, the way data uh, is surging, we will need more spectrum. And I'm glad that on your um, uh, request, the TRAI is engaged in a consultation paper. 
in terms of putting out recommendations to you so that an early next round of auction can take place. Within that, we would hope that there will be enough spectrum put out on the table so that the industry can add to the existing spectrum pools that they have to ensure that we don't see some very uh, heightened activity in the trading area. Trading is, to, in, in my mind, meant to allow some of the operators who don't have use of this spectrum to give it to those who need it. But surely, your design never envisaged very large premiums. I have been a votary uh, of free trading of spectrum. In fact, when the government decided to levy a 13% charge on spectrum trading, my view was so that this spectrum has been taken in auction and monies have been paid and therefore this should be allowed to be transferred with only an administrative charge of 1% that you are charging. However, the last deal which has been announced clearly makes my case extremely weak. In fact, the government in that sense may rightly say today, if spectrum is sold for 100 on day one and it's going to sold for 150 on day five or six, then should the government not pick up some part of that revenue? I think therefore the middle ground here should be the spectrum price that was discovered in the auction should be the base on which nothing should be charged to my mind. But any earned, in, any earned increase on top of that, any windfall gains, a substantial portion must be shared with the government. This could be a better compromise, and I would really appeal to you from uh, this forum today that you may want to look at a situation where spectrum uh, profit, uh, profiting is discouraged by government charging a levy, but spectrum trading should be encouraged so that those who need spectrum desperately can access spectrum without paying a kind of a levy or a 13, 14%. This also puts pressure on uh, the reserve price, and I must uh, mention that there have been five auctions, sir. Uh, uh, most of them have been uh, prior to your period. One successful have, has been in, uh, during your term. The first auction, I think none of us knew how to go about it. Neither the regulator, nor the department, nor the operators. Some sensible estimates had to be made. And if I may remind the audience here, the 3G spectrum 5 uh, megahertz block was fixed at 3,500 approximately. And that block of spectrum, sir, went for 16,500. So it went up by nearly four and a half, five times. The BWO spectrum, again, was more than twice the reserve price. The second time around, I think because of the scare of the Supreme Court cancellation of licenses, etc., the reserve price was taken up uh, very high by the regulator. The result was uh, no show in the first round of uh, spectrum auction, which was the second auction. And the third auction had a very, very small participation in which some of those who picked up are now trading in those spectrum. The last one, uh, the round which went off very successfully, last two rounds, have seen certain bands very heavy activity and some bands uh, moderate uh, to low activity. Therefore, at best, all the exercise that is done around And therefore, we need to probably accelerate this program, get a good estimate, and put out the spectrum into auction. The other part I would say is on the spectrum caps. Here again, I think we have to commend you and Department of Telecom and TRAI that you are reviewing the process of looking at spectrum caps. My own view is 50% uh, in-band spectrum cap I think is a good um, uh, check to have because nobody wants to have the spectrum, entire spectrum in one uh, operator's hands. That takes away robust competition, that takes away development of ecosystem. But the overall cap of 25% certainly needs a relaxation because there are operators with 35, 40% market share and operating at a lower level. So my other request to you would be to, sir, to liberally look at the spectrum cap issues, again, which will allow uh, broadband networks to be built of a higher quality. The regulator raised the issue of uh, wireline, the fixed line, and I, it was not on my agenda to speak, but picking up from what he said, I would say this is again uh, an area which should require a lot of uh, push from your side, sir. 95% of India's wireline is provided by BSNL and MTNL. And only about 5% by private sector because private sector has been mainly engaged within the wireless space. There is a 6% license fee which is levied on fixed line as well, of which 5% is given as USO by fixed line. And 95% of this comes from BSNL and MTNL. Fixed line in itself needs USO support. Fixed line is uh, an, an area which is uh, requiring some attention, sir, and I would say if we need to push fixed line, we need to incentivize it. 
I think you came out uh, uh, through the regulator's voice by taking away the termination charge on fixed line. You made it zero. I think that was a great move. But somehow it has had unintended consequences. Just last week, a uh, new service has been launched called Ringo. All you have to do is send a missed call to their number. Then they pick up the fixed line. They connect two mobile connections that you need, the one you need and where you have dialed from. They connect these two mobile phones and no termination charge is paid on either side. So they are gaming the system. I am sure regulators are already looking at it, but it has had unintended consequences. That it is meant for BSNL, MTNL, and fixed line operators, but there are services coming around this to arbitrage on the uh, termination charges. So my request would be some incentives towards people to roll out fixed networks would be order of the day in China, where you have over a mobile phones, over a mobile uh, a million mobile phones, you have about 400 million fixed line phones. In India, as we are reaching to a billion mobile phones, I think the fixed line is shrinking from the 37, 38 million in 90s to around 24, 25 million today. So that will be another area for your attention, sir. Overall, I feel we are on a very strong wicket with a very forward-looking policies coming from the Department of Telecom under your leadership, a very robust forward-looking regulator, a very determined ecosystem providers like Ericsson and others who are increasing more and more capacity in the same spectrum. We just saw some of the 5G uh, uh, demonstration where you could actually look at 5,000 Mbps. And that, to my mind, is a mind-boggling number that you can crunch in the same spectrum and can take a lot of uh, issues uh, that are bothering the industry today. And then, of course, last but not the least in the same food chain, the mobile operators uh, and the other telecom service providers who are determined shoulder-to-shoulder uh, -to, -shoulder to take the digital India agenda forward. So with these words, let me say, sir, we are grateful for your uh, indulgence. We are, uh, thankful that you are taking a, a bold and courageous um, uh, role in uh, moving this industry forward. And on our behalf, on the industry's behalf, as perhaps the longest uh, 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 serving member of the Indian private se sector telecom, I would like to tell you that our commitment remains firm and we will ensure that we come up to your expectations. Thank you very much.